So I'm going to start out today um, asking the big question about, uh, about this conflict that somebody asked me, which is why does it matter? And to be clear, it's uh, Saturday, February 26th. Um, I'm going to try to do a couple of videos today because I've got a ton of questions. The first one I'm, I'm going to uh, answer a big question that somebody put to me, which is why does it matter? Then I'm going to go on and, and do a separate video uh, just to keep the lengths manageable uh, on some of the possible uh, uh, Western uh, responses, sanctions, things like that. Uh, and then I may, if I have time, do a third one that, that gets at some, some other questions still. But I want to begin with this question of um, if, if you're uh, an American in particular, um, why should you care or why does it matter? And in particular, the question of why should the American government um, be, be seriously getting involved in this conflict? And um, I'm going to make the case that, that we should absolutely should care about this. And there's a lot at stake here for the, the average American um, besides just things like the price of gas and, and bread. Um, but I, I want to stress that I think it's important to ask the question. Um, I think it's important to, to, to the extent that the United States is going to do something about this and maybe make some sacrifices, um, that we understand why we're doing it. So uh, I, I would break up the, the reasons why, why the average American should care um, into, into two big baskets. One is a set of uh, that we might call the ethical and moral reasons, and then the other one is questions of national interest. So first, the, um, the ethical moral uh, reasons. Put pretty simply, this is, uh, uh, Ukraine's a country uh, that doesn't have any um, ambitions to expand into anybody else. It's basically a bunch of people who, who want to be left alone to, to live their lives and do their thing. And they're being uh, attacked, of course, and killed uh, by, a, by a, a large, uh, aggressive army from next door, uh, one of the biggest armies uh, in, in, in the world. And the goal, as far as we could tell, is basically just to subject the Ukrainian state and the Ukrainian people to Russian control. Um, it's also a case of, of uh, a democracy, a flawed democracy, but yet somewhat uh, um, vibrant democracy, uh, a place where, where the press is, is free, if not uh, always perfect. Uh, people don't generally get thrown in jail for their political views, of that getting taken over by an increasing authoritarian and what now some people are, are saying, and I think reasonably so, though we can debate this and we should be careful with these words, a fascist state of, of Russia. Um, so you might say, reasonably say, from the perspective of, say, the United States or the West more broadly, um, if we don't stand for this, then what do we stand for? If we don't stand against uh, countries crushing their neighbors, against autocratic nations trying to stamp out democracy, uh, then we probably don't stand for anything. And if we don't, then a lot of other things are probably going to happen down the road that we're not so thrilled about. Um, so that kind of gets us to the question of, of national interest. Um, and, and the national interest argument boils down essentially to uh, Russia has clearly shown itself to be uh, um, not only authoritarian, but expansionist and, and violent. And the question is, um, do you want to deal with it now in a way that, that we may be able to do so, not with getting troops involved, but with maybe helping to supply another country with some, some weapons? Um, or do you potentially want to deal with it down the road when it's actually uh, not, only, not only potentially involves American soldiers getting killed, but an increased risk of, of World War III? Um, and let me, let me lay this out for you. Um, you might reasonably say we don't care about Ukraine too much. Uh, but the question is, what happens next? Uh, if, Ukraine, if, if, if Russia takes over Ukraine and it's already taken over Belarus, then there's a, a now basically a new boundary between an expansionist uh, uh, Russia and countries like Poland, Hungary, Slovakia, Romania that we have made a commitment to via NATO. Um, and at that point, any attack by Russia on them or subversion or whatever they try to do we would be required by treaty um, to, to fight. And so now you're talking potentially about nuclear war with Russia, or at least a war that would make uh, World War II potentially look like uh, a picnic, uh, because just because of the changes in weapons since then. So, so that's the danger. Um, the danger is if you don't do anything about Ukraine, then Russia becomes emboldened, and pretty soon, rather than them fighting uh, about something you don't care very much about, uh, they're fighting about something that you care a lot about. A lot about. 
Um, now, you might say, uh, there's two arguments, actually, that, were, that were, have been put to me about this. One would be, uh, well, why don't we just give up on Europe altogether? Who needs NATO? Why are we protecting these countries? Um, and I'm gonna, I would just respond with, a, with an historical argument, which is um, several times in the past, um, certainly in the case of World War I and in World War II, but also in the Cold War, um, the United States has started out trying to say we don't want to be involved in wars in Europe. And what always has ended up happening is we say, you know what, um, we can't let an evil, hostile power take over Europe because we simply have too much going on with Europe. Um, we don't want to simply become an, an isolated um, island. Uh, that's what the threat was in World War I, in World War II, really, and in the Cold War. So the argument then is we do have something at stake in Europe, and the best way to defend it um, is, is to stop Russian expansionism uh, when, when we can do so at a relatively low cost. Um, there's another argument that, uh, that, that, that I've heard, which is, well, if, we, if what we really care about is Poland and Hungary and Slovakia and, and the Baltic states, why not wait till Russia uh, attacks them and, and deal with it then? And as I said, the problem is that if you deal with it, then things could pretty uh, quickly escalate to a nuclear war. Uh, somebody actually asked me, is, is there a chance that this is going to lead to World War III? Um, and my answer is, I don't think so. Uh, but, it's, but World War III is, you know, it's a lot more likely today than it was a week ago, that's for sure. Um, th if you want to make the case to say we should, from a national interest perspective, we should, we should throw uh, Ukraine under the bus, the argument would be that if, Russia gets its hands on Ukraine, um, it'll be satisfied. It'll be satisfied, it'll be happy, there will be no more interfering in our elections, there will be no more uh, poisoning of, of people in, uh, in, in English cities or, or putting polonium in their teacups in London, which is a real story, uh, it really happened. There will be no more cyber ha attacks, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, if you believe that all Russia wants is Ukraine and that we can have a great relationship with Russia if only we acquiesce to Russian control of Ukraine, then there might be a self-interest, uh, a self-interested case for doing that. I have to say I'm pretty skeptical. Um, I'm pretty skeptical that that if Russia takes over Ukraine and especially if it does it very easily and at low cost, that it's going to say we never uh, we never want anything uh, uh, again. Uh, Putin talked a lot last week, and, and this was actually a change in his rhetoric to really be very negative about the Soviet Union and, and really talk more about the Russia that existed before the Soviet Union, the Russian Empire. And the Russian Empire did extend all the way as far uh, west as Warsaw, Poland. Right, A lot of today's Poland, as well as the Baltic states, were controlled by the Russian Empire uh, up until, up until you know, World War I and then the Russian Revolution. And so... There seems to be a, a pretty direct clash between what Putin seems to have in mind um, and what we've committed to, to defending. Uh, and so my argument would be we're probably better off uh, dealing with it now. But reasonable people can disagree. Um, I'll stop there for now, and, and I'm going to come back, as I said, and I'll do another video and hopefully post it fairly quickly, dealing with some of these questions about exactly the things uh, the United States and the West can do.